So I am currently prepping for about seven days worth of work. Some of it is local, some of it is travel. And I am getting the cart ready uh, just to do a one-man band. Get the cart out, move it into location, everything on the cart. Don't have to grab anything off the van. So, right now I have a 600X as my main key light. But, I did get this new light in from Zhiyun, or Zhiyun, which is a 500 watt bicolor LED light. So, I'm thinking, this doesn't need a ballast. It just needs the head fixture and a cable. Whereas this 600X needs ballast, uh, two cables, and the actual fixture there, so... Might just mess around and replace my 600X with that new light here and just see what happens. Luckily, this shoot, they don't have a certain requirement for lighting equipment, so they're not going to care what kind of lights I'm using um, as long as I get the, the job done. So I'm going to see what happens if I just replace this with the smaller unit and see how that light works. I'll probably have this in the van just as a backup, just in case, you know, it's not working out as I thought it would. But, um, yeah, that's the idea. So I have two camera packages, two FX3s, director's monitor, uh, two tripods, bunch of light stands in the middle. I think like five light stands, some more heavy duty ones, and then... A couple of those smaller profile light stands, gold mount batteries, a key light, then I have a softbox, audio, and then I'm, I'm probably going to bring these little spotlights as well. These little Aperture 60Xs. So it'll actually probably end up looking something like this. bunch of uh, stingers and um, XLR cables. Probably won't need HDMI cables. I'm gonna go wireless with the director's monitor. So yeah, everything for a two camera interview will be on the cart, minus a couple little things. I'll need a soft box. But yeah, it's gonna be all on the cart. Okay, so here's the new configuration. I replaced the 600X with this new uh, Zhiyun 500 watt bicolor light. And I'm actually gonna bring this big uh, light dome. This is Aperture 150 light dome, whatever. I'm gonna bring that guy. I think I might want a bigger, softer source. Originally, I was just gonna bring this little pop-up softbox this light dome se i think it's 36 inch or something but this this guy's going to be a little bit better um softer key light but yeah i did save quite a bit of room replacing the 600x with just this guy um so i was able to shift these crates around so i have a local shoot uh tomorrow and the next day Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday I fly to California. I have a two-day shoot out there. Um, so I'll have to pack for that simultaneously because there's not going to be a lot of time to re-pack equipment. Luckily, I'm using a whole different set of lights for that one. Um, I still might bring this guy, this new 500-watt uh, LED, just because it's so small. Might try and find a way to squeeze it in. But, um, yeah. So, that's the only downside is there's not a whole lot of gap in between Monday and Tuesday's shoots before I have to leave it early morning Wednesday. So, it's Sunday now and I'm trying to prep everything so that way I don't have to worry about it. Just have bags already loaded in the van um, for a quick turnaround. After I get home on Friday... I'm going for a week-long vacation with my family. We leave Saturday. So, super busy. And then 
literally the day after I get back from vacation, I have another shoot. So I have to pack for that shoot as well. So there's three different jobs happening that need to be kind of packed for um, because there's not a whole lot of gaps in between. So I'll keep you guys posted. Pro tip, always keep a first aid kit in your car. I know you guys hear me talk about my innovative cart quite a bit here on the channel, but it really is my most used piece of equipment. And I think it is definitely worth the investment. I know there's a lot of other cheaper options now, but at the time when I was looking into purchasing a production cart, Innovative seemed like it was the only option at the time, but you can definitely use other cards. I'm not saying it has to be innovative. Uh, I know Pro Aim makes some really good cards as well, and even Rock and Roller. I know for years I've used Rock and Roller cards. I've used wagons. I've made my own cards. To me, it's less about the name brand of the cart and more about like I think it's very valuable having some sort of transportation for your equipment. I think it's more efficient. I I know for me, I like being able to get to location, unload just a single cart, and then go wherever I need to go. I know for this shoot, it's about a 10 minute walk to my car. So if I got up to location and forgot something, I would have to go back and grab it from my vehicle. That's 20 minutes that would eat out of my setup time. When I only have 30 to 45 minutes to set up equipment, I can't really afford to have to go back to my car. And I know not every shoe, you know, you need a cart. Sometimes it's easier to work out of your van if you're really close by. Having a, a innovative cart or any sort of cart could actually be more trouble than it's worth. But for me, I find myself using my innovative cart more times you know, even just for a clean surface area to build a camera or whatever. I just like having my innovative cart with me. I feel like it makes my life just a little bit easier, especially if you're just by yourself, one man band. I really do like this light from Zoom, the this 500 watt light. I like how simple it is to set up. Literally, it's just plugging in a power cable and then that's it. I had the light at like 45% the whole entire day. And it was enough to balance with um, the daylight coming in through the windows and being able to make sure everything was exposed correctly. Luckily, it was a little bit of an overcast, cloudy day. But still, having the light at 45% and being able to see out the windows is huge. So this is definitely a really powerful light. And having it you know, be able to change color temperatures, by color, that's even better. There are a few things that I think could be a negative for some people with the light. Number one being, since it doesn't have a ballast, the controls for the light are on top of the light. So it makes it a little tricky if you do have the light set up pretty high in a high spot, then you, you're kind of guessing to the output level or the Kelvin temperature if you can't see the screen on the back. For most of my shoots, it's really not a problem, but I could see that being an issue if you had to raise the light up super high. I know they do have an app, so that could solve that issue. Um, if you download that that Zhiyun app, I haven't really messed around with it too much, but that could easily fix that issue. And then the other issue that I was running into is the yoke system, the mount, the way um, you articulate the head. It, it, it is very strong, but I couldn't keep my 150 dome on there. Um, I even had it cranked all the way and it was still kind of creaking a little bit down over time. So you really have to be careful with what kind of modifiers you use with this light. Um, I, it could just be the unit that I received. It might not be an issue for everyone, but in my experience... I couldn't use my big aperture 150 uh, dome. It was just too heavy for the, the yoke. So I had to swap it out for another modifier, which wasn't a big issue for me. 
but just something to consider if you do want to mount a heavy modifier you just have to make sure it's going to work with this light this is day two of filming in california currently in mission viejo and the shoot is actually in san juan capistrano which is 10 minutes from here just stayed at this hotel this is uh, day two. Yesterday was pretty hectic. I went straight from flying in to straight into the shoot. So the call time was noon. And I traveled from Arkansas to California. And that was early flight. Had to be up at 3 a.m. for a flight um, that went out at 5 something. So it was a long travel day and then a full shoot day. We didn't wrap until probably 7, 8 o'clock. I just stayed the night at a hotel about 10 minutes away from location in Mission Viejo. Um, so yeah, day three is uh, a travel day plus a production day. So we're going till about noon and then I got to catch another flight um, out of Long Beach at about 2 p.m. So it's been a pretty crazy few days um, with travel and also just production heavy. So on top of all the freelance work I do locally in Arkansas and surrounding states, I actually work for a creative agency full time in California. So they just signed a contract with a client a financial advisor who is uh, wanting to put together a course, curriculum, that sort of thing. And they uh, flew me out to capture some promotional material with this new client and to also have a few meetings while I was here. And you might be thinking, why wouldn't they just hire someone locally in California? You know, I'm not using crazy equipment. I'm using an old FS5. And, you know, there's other options that probably would have been cheaper than you know, paying for my flight, rental car, food expenses, hotel, whatever, on top of a day rate. But with this client in this space, in the financial world, they're all about building relationships. And we have a ton of shoots lined up for this client out in Atlanta, some in Indiana, all over the country. So for them, it's about having a relationship with someone. And for me, I would be their, their video guy. I'm going to be at all these shoots. If they need anything, if they want to brainstorm, if they have any questions, I'm their go-to guy for video production or whatever. So having that consistency in that building of relationship I think is very important with this client in particular and lots of clients that we work with, they like having a face, the same face for whatever, as opposed to, you know, hiring a contractor in all these different locations. Yes, that's probably easier and it's probably a lot cheaper in some cases, but they like being able, able to have my phone number. They know my name, they know my family. They know details like that. It's more relationship building and less high production. good team of staff here and we appreciate all that they've done to help us get back to where we need to be in our everyday life and just been able to do things that we couldn't do at that period of time. Give it some gas, Charlie. So I have a few rentals going out tomorrow in the morning, a uh, Dana Dolly package, as well as some other little odds and ends. And I'm delivering it tomorrow morning, nine o'clock for a shoot. 
I don't mind doing a delivery if I'm not like super busy. I of course like will have to add like a delivery fee, but for the most part, if someone is renting something from me, I'll usually have them come pick it up as opposed to me dropping it off. That's if I'm, you know, busy, but if I'm not doing a shoot or not working, editing, whatever, I'll usually just have, I'll just usually drop it off. Just makes it a little bit easier and pick it up as well.